New World Whiskey, it's about whiskey that is doing something different in terms of where it's coming from or different in the way that it's made. I believe New World Whiskey has the ability to really transform the whiskey category as a whole. It's got so much potential to really drive whiskey as a global category into this whole new era. I think one of the reasons why whiskey has maintained its position really as being the sort of biggest and most exciting spirits category for generations is because whiskey always reinvents itself. You know, some things that we think of as being pillars of whiskey like single malt are relatively new in, in whiskey terms. I truly believe New World Whiskey is really exciting. Like it excites me and I'm a Scotch drinker, I love my Scotch, but you can't deny, you know, the, the new brands that are coming out look great and the liquid's great. They're not just gimmicky, it's not just people doing things for the sake of it. There's a new palette open to new experiences. There's a market because everybody's perceptions now are more open than it were before. I think the thing New World Whiskies can learn um, is actually the mistake of making education a barrier to coming into the category. And I think uh, what we've seen in the past in the, the whiskey category is that this need, uh, before you drink or enjoy something, first you must be, have it explained to you why you're going to enjoy it. And I think the beauty of the way New World Whiskies approach their product, it's all about enjoying it. That awkward moment where as the consumer, you are very aware that the bartender has significantly more knowledge on this subject, and that can be intimidating for some people. The knowledge of whiskey is something that is, is nice kudos points to have, and you don't want to lose those in the, in, in the company of your friends. Hospitality essentially breaks down into two things, right? You give them what they want, and you introduce them to something new, and it's up to you as an operator what your percentage is of that balance. So we created a, a price chart um, that went on the menu and also on it, which is just the little, you can see the coloured dots we have on the bottles. That basically tells them whether it's four quid a nip or whether it's 25 quid a nip. Because one thing we found that people were put off because whiskey's so vast, right, that they were scared to choose something and then be charged far too much money for it. So it's amazing because we can still take them on a journey within that price range now. If I know, right, your price range is between four and eight bucks, I know the plethora of whiskey that I can now introduce you to within that because that's what you're comfortable with in buying. You know, so I can understand what kind of flavours you like and I can take you on that journey from that. For example, in Black Rock, we separate all of our whiskies by flavour category. We have six categories, fruit, spice, sweet, fragrance, balance and smoke. But we also arrange the whiskies uh, vertically as well based on their intensity. So whiskies that are high up in the cabinet, lighter whiskies float up to the top. Heavier whiskies, more dense styles, sink down to the bottom. From a selection of 300 plus whiskies, if you know that you want a light fruity whisky, you've already refined down to something like 20, which is quite a powerful thing to be able to do in a matter of seconds when you walk into a bar. And that's powerful because it means that we are breaking down these barriers of entry into the category. We're removing sticking points that would normally stop someone from choosing whisky because they don't like the flavor of whisky as they perceive it. Tasting is believing. You go to, to any uh, product that we, that we have in the database and tap on uh, Flavor Spiral. If you're using the app, for example, you know, you'll see these beautiful animated flavors that, you know, there's no more tasting notes. You drink, you, 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 you want to, to, to get the gist of it as soon as possible. And In the next year or so, I think we'll see uh, New World Whiskey come onto the radar of more consumers. Already we're starting to see more people aware of what Australian single malt is. In the next 10 years, I think we'll see an explosion in the number of distillers and brands and products and styles and flavours that are available within New World Whiskey as a whole. If you think back to some of the great things that have been done in whisky historically, you know, over over a decade or more of educating people about the regions of Scotland and the styles that were typically associated with the regions of Scotland, I think it did a great job about helping consumers navigate Scotch and discover new scotches that they love. So, so I think the real opportunity for New World Whisky as a category is to find a way of helping people understand and appreciate the diversity of the category. What's exciting for me is to sort of kind of see that that next iteration of whisky is really sort of being born before our eyes. Yeah.